start, I, I'm going to do a couple of acknowledgments. And the first one, Ken already alluded to a little bit. Um, the only reason I'm giving a talk on this subject was because Ken allowed me to participate in a project that was his idea. He was the one who developed and got the funding for it. So as you remember, the first semester, we studied bonding and molecular structure. And then toward the end, we did some sort of thermodynamics, which is what connects structure to energy, which is what determines what chemistry will happen. So this semester, we're going to talk about that chemistry. So since you're educators, you've all seen this. And, and, and doubtless, you've heard this before. People will say, you know, classrooms are the same as they were 100 years ago. 100 years ago, except the heating is centralized. But aside from that, so these are three classroom type recordings um, that uh, show a number of problems. Uh, let's go over some of the uh, things that we just saw here. Before I uh, start, I, I'm going to do a couple of acknowledgments. So here we have one. a single camera position, which is pointed bit. at the projection um, screen, I'm so the speaker is in the dark. And then also uh, you have traffic in front of the camera, which uh, needs to be edited well, as out. Remember the first semester, we studied bonding and molecular This structure. is very nice. The lighting here and is very good, the but end, there's still we did traffic. Some sort of thermodynamics, which is what connects structure to We energy, are also using a single which is what camera angle. Determines what chemistry will happen. However, the so this speaker is put under a chemistry. separate spotlight, and the projection screen and speaker both show up very well. Over here, uh, the room itself is just very dark, and all the audio is being picked up by the camera, and so the audio is echoey and faint. So we'd like to uh, have multiple cameras inside the classroom. I have uh, marked the positions of three different cameras in this classroom here. Uh, the primary camera is set right in the middle of the audience in a fairly natural position to see the speaker. Uh, rather than focusing on the screen, we are going to zoom into the speaker's regular position. And I also have a second fixed camera. This is an unmanned camera that looks only at the audience. Finally, there's one camera that I'll have that I will actively man. With this camera I can zoom in on the speaker from a separate angle and then also I can pan over to the audience if there are questions being asked or any other activity. Also if the speaker shows a, some kind of uh, demonstration uh, or other object then we can focus in on that. Using the three cameras the active and two passive cameras, we can have several different shots and we can cut into the different shots during the editing. I think we can go through my talk fairly quickly. So this is my stationary camera together, in the center of the audience. Of large and How after this, I cut to well. the other stationary camera pointing toward the audience. Uh, I was able to move it around here and then quickly switch over to my active camera. He would have wanted me to be down there, but we're here. What we're trying to get is the In many cases, uh, figures and slides that are projected on the screen need to be modified in order to uh, highlight features that the uh, speaker is referring to. Notice that this per pump curves and comes in three different sizes of impellers. That's these three curves, but we have to go to the same curve here that we were on. This is a V6, and uh, the V6 will meet our specifications in its upper speed range. We said we wanted about 79, 78, or so. Sometimes figures that a speaker will we'll use need, need to curve. be cropped or zoomed in in order to uh, eliminate distracting time. features. That's the, that's the one we want to use. And uh, then in addition, uh, Call-outs or highlights need to be added. In order to uh, substitute for uh, the use of a laser pointer during the talk. Propane, it would let you load it up a little more. Intermittent natural gas, you could go a little higher. But we're going to be running continuously, so 
Uh, we'd be running about 2,400 RPM on this engine. This, this, is, a, this is like a three-dimensional plot of uh, efficiency with elevation. Sometimes an extremely complex uh, or confusing figure needs to be reworked entirely in order to emphasize certain features, things that really don't show up well at all on a two-dimensional graph or two-dimensional uh, presentation. Until we got to about eight, to a mixture of about 18.5 uh, pounds of air per pound of fuel. 